the discussion on those will give you some idea on how I see the evolving energy situation in the world. First and foremost, energy is the lifeline of any economy. So if you're talking about how a country is doing, and by performance here I mean economic performance, a sure indicator in the measurement of that performance would be the growth in energy consumption. The second proposition I want to place before you is that the time has come for us to be able to shift the hard facts from the waffle that is normally created. And my second proposition, which I want to place before you, is there is actually no energy shortage in the world today. By energy, I mean traditional fossil fuels. The world has, over a period of time, been consuming something like 102 billion, million, sorry, 102 million barrels of crude a day. That 102 million barrels is actually available. But some countries who, and I want to be diplomatically correct, who are broadly categorized as the producers, they have decided for a variety of reasons on the quantity of energy, that is crude oil, that they will release into the market. So today, if I'm not mistaken, from 102 million barrels a day, the amount of crude oil being released is about 95, 95 million barrels or so. Now, if you talk to the producers, and I'm still on point two, if you talk to the producers, they will tell you that we don't determine prices. Fair enough. I don't think there's any formal mechanism which the producing countries use in order to be able to say, well, the price of crude should be $92 a barrel today or $110 a barrel tomorrow. But what they do de determine is the overall quantity of crude oil that they are going to release into the market. And my submission to you is that that quantity, either in incre increase or in decrease, determines the price. But that's not the only thing. Sometimes even when they want to increase the price or reduce the price, in comes the wild card or the uh, new elephant in the room, which is the consuming countries. You can produce all the oil you want to or refine all the oil you, want, you, you can. And India is not insignificant in that. I think our refining capacity today is about 252 million, uh, 252 million metric tons per annum. And we are taking that up to 300 million metric tons per annum. The Prime Minister even used 450 million metric tons per annum at the India Energy Week. I'm a little more cautious. I say we are targeting 400 million metric tons per annum over a period of time. The refineries which are in the pipeline, those are, we are already at around 300 plus we'll reach. So the first proposition was energy is the lifeline of an economy. If there is energy usage, economy is doing well. Number two, there's no shortage of crude oil in the world. And the third one is comes to what the subject of your deliberations this evening is. Anand is an old friend, so don't mind if I pull his leg a little. I think his introductory notes were written with my friend R.K. Singh in mind. I know he's coming next. But it was about solar, it's about rooftops, etc. Now, don't quote me to him. I know you've got me uh, on, on, on record. So I'm always saying nice things because we are not only colleagues in the cabinet, but we also go back. Uh, we were uh, civil servants together. Actually, the guys who raise the prices, because they reduce the supply, they are motivated by a single consideration, which is that they have something which is going to go out of fashion. Because the environmental lobbies and others will all gang up and say, no more use of fossil fuel, no more petrol, no more diesel. So periodically, 
they will want to maximize the return on their sovereign resource. So occasionally they will want to play that game. Now I think you should all collectively write them a letter of thanks.